Hello, welcome to Lil's Winter World and welcome to Tudor Temper, a whole month devoted for all things Tudor. In this episode we are going to be talking about my favourite non-fiction books when it comes to the Tudor period. There are so many wonderful books out there devoted to the Tudors and devoted to all things Tudor, so devoted to certain parts of the monarchy, devoted to the Reformation, etc, etc. And today I want to talk to you about my favourites. Now this was really difficult because this whole bookcase is devoted to books on predominantly the Tudor period and so it was real, really difficult for me to whittle it down. Now I have managed to whittle it down to five plus four honourable mentions. I've had to sneak these honourable mentions in there because they're just fantastic and they do have to be in there. Um, now the five that I've chosen are ones that have some sort of emotional connection to me and so it's not just a case of this book is brilliant and very well researched etc etc, it's a case of this book and me connect on an emotional level, which I think is just as important. So let's get straight into it with the honourable mentions. I'll go through these quite quick um, because I want to spend more time with the books that I think are amazing, but these are still great books that you should definitely check out if you are interested in the period of the Tudors. So the first book that I want to honourably mention is this one. I'm not very good at French, so please excuse my pronunciation. La Reine. Blanche, or La Renée Blanche, Mary Tudor, A Life in Letters by Sarah Bryson. This is a wonderful biography of Mary Tudor, as in Henry VIII's sister, the daughter of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. And Mary is fascinating. She's a real fascinating woman who sadly I don't think gets enough um, out there known about her and her life. And she lived, she, re she really did live an interesting life. Um, this is a wonderful biography focusing as uh, the letters as primary source evidence um, to, to learn about her life and it's really interesting to learn about her and so if you haven't read this please do because it is wonderful. My next honourable mention is The Fall of Anne Boleyn, A Countdown by Claire Ridgway. This book was very very special um, and something that I don't see done very often. So this book goes through dates and it goes through specific days and what happened on them. So 2nd of April 1536, a controversial Passion Sunday sermon, etc. 23rd of April 1536, a warning sign and it's what happened on those days and then at the end Claire kind of sums up looking at the evidence what is responsible for the downfall of Anne Boleyn. Not necessarily what's responsible for the execution because of course that's Henry, that's Henry's decision to execute Anne. Didn't need to execute Anne because the, her marriage was already annulled but who led to the fall? And um, Claire looks at all the evidence and that's really interesting and yeah there's not many books out there like this that just take it day by day and I really liked that so definitely pick this up if you haven't already and if you're an Anne Boleyn fan. The next one isn't actually just a book, it is an author, but that is Elizabeth Norton. This is her book on Catherine Parr, but she's done a whole range of different books of people of the Tudor period, and they're wonderful, they're great little introductory books. They're so accessible and easy to read, They you just whisk through them. I can easily read one of these in one sitting, and that's why they're just wonderful, and you know, they're, they're great little refreshers if you just want to keep your memory up to date as well, and they're just, they're just lovely books, so very well written, so of course I have to mention Elizabeth Norton. And last up for the honourable mentions is this one, of course I had to mention it. This is The Life and Death of Anne Boleyn by Eric Ives. This one is the, the Bible when it comes to Anne Boleyn, so to speak. Um, it's quite a big chunky monkey but it is a wonderfully, brilliantly re researched biography of Anne Boleyn and it's kind of like the definitive biography, let's say. So if you want a biography of Anne Boleyn, you have to get this one. Okay, now on to my actual mentions. Now, I have managed to put them in some sort of order as well, so I've got a top five. Are we ready? So at number five, I have an Alison Weir. This is The Lady in the Tower of the Fall of Anne Boleyn. Now, this was the first, one of the first books that I read that I didn't agree with, but still adored, because I think what Alison does really well is she puts the primary source there and then she explains what she's taken from that. So she's like, this is a primary source, therefore we get this. And I'm like, oh, but I look at that and think differently. And that's absolutely fine because that's, you know, your interpretation of it. Um, 
and it was just wonderful. It was a really, really good read and it really got my brain going. And that's why I liked it so much. I just thought it was wonderful and fascinating. And Alison Weir is a great historical writer. So if you haven't read this, you really should. The next one that I want to mention is Crown of Blood by Nicola Tallis. Not only is this a beautiful book on the outside, it's a beautiful book on the inside too. This is a biography of Lady Jane Grey the nine day queen or technically 13 day queen but whatever we'll let that slide this book is absolutely amazingly written it is absolutely knockout i when i went into this book i already knew the story of lady jane gray i knew nothing was going to be like oh that's really new to me but the way that it was written really moved me and spoilers if you don't know your british history but at the end with lady jane gray and her execution my stomach was just going over. It was so emotive and I feel like Nicola Tyas did such a good job of not only explaining what happened but the emotional trauma that Lady Jane Grey would have gone through and yeah it kind of broke my heart this book a little bit but it's so brilliantly written and I do have to also, this is cheating a little bit, but to add on to this, this one, this is Elizabeth Rival. Now this is also by Nicola Tallis and this book is about Lettuce Knowles. Now Lettuce Knowles was Elizabeth Rival because of course they both were in love with Robert Dudley who was the great love of Elizabeth I's life. Um, just putting that out there because it's true. And uh, this is brilliantly written because sometimes when you talk about lettuce it's really difficult because you can be biased towards her or Elizabeth but I think Nicola again did a great job and it was really emotive and sometimes when Robert with 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 was with um one or the other you could feel the other's pain sort of thing and your heart just my heart really went out to Elizabeth so much when I was reading this it was just wonderful she does have another one which I haven't bought yet so I do need to get around to doing that but yeah these are wonderful books and yeah snuck two in in one go then we have a wonderful book by Amy License this is Catherine of Aragon an intimate life of Henry VIII's true queen this is a beast of a book but it is wonderful i threw through it so quickly amy license has a wonderfully unique writing style she writes in a way where she manages to sneak all the nitty gritty all the really mundane things in but make it absolutely fascinating and integral to the story i loved it now myself i have a very interesting relationship with catherine of aragon shall we say i I struggle with Catherine O'Brien a little bit. I think it's because I'm very much Elizabeth, so I'm very naturally team Anne Boleyn that I struggle a little bit with Catherine. But this book brought me a whole load closer to her and I really like that when a book does that. And it's that's thanks to Amy License's amazing writing that she just brought me closer to her. And yeah, I just think it's wonderful and you should definitely read it if you haven't already. Also, while we're talking about Amy License, the earrings that I currently have on, if you can see, these are made by Amy License herself. So she has this um, shop, I know I'm going off tangent, but it's still Tudor. She has this online shop where she makes jewelry that is Tudor themed. So these are themed around the gardens, as you know, I love gardens, the gardens of the Tudor period. And I just, I couldn't resist. There's a whole load of them on there that I want to get my hands on eventually. But yeah, little plug. <laughs> Go and get them. They're wonderful. Right, we're down to my favourite two of non-fiction. At my number two is this one. This is Catherine Howard, The Tragic Story of Henry VIII's Fifth Queen by Josephine Wilkinson. Catherine Howard has... I feel I've got a bad rap over the years because I feel like for hundreds and hundreds of years it's just kind of been given that her sentence was true and she was guilty etc and there wasn't a lot of research being done and not a lot of people going over the evidence in which we have available for her which is very limited um, but there has been a few recently biographies this one there's been another one called Young Diamond Fair which is also really good um, but this one just it captures my heart because this one this is one of the first non-fiction books I ever read that didn't feel like I was reading non-fiction you know sometimes when you read non-fiction it can feel 
a little bit dry and you have to stop and you have to put it down and you want some fiction, you want a storybook, this felt like a storybook. It felt like I was reading a fictional account of Catherine's life, but I knew I wasn't, this is all non-fiction, but it had that fictional element, that storyteller element that Josephine Wilkinson had managed to display and it was absolutely wonderful. It was such a brilliant, brilliant book and I highly recommend it whether you are Team Catherine or not, um, it's just wonderfully and beautifully written. And my favourite non-fiction book, I'm sure some of you know this already, but it is Elizabeth by David Starkey. This book I have had for a very long time. It is slightly yellow, a um, little bit bashed and bruised. Let's just say it is very well loved. I've had it since it was published, which is, this one is 2001. And so I've had it for a good time, let's say, and it is magnificent. This is the first non-fiction book that I ever read on Elizabeth, and this is the book that got me hooked on this amazing woman. Elizabeth I, if you don't know already, she is my historical heroine. So any book on Elizabeth, I'm like, I need it in my life. And this is a book that got me there because I read it and I was like, who is this amazing person? And from there I was hooked. So that is why it's my favourite book. So there we have it. Those are my favourite non-fiction historical Tudor books. I would love to know what are your favourite historical non-fiction Tudor books. Let me know in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, please give a big thumbs up. If you're enjoying Tudor Timber, please let me know in the comments and I shall see you soon for the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.